Hello everyone and welcome to the 11th video of the Angular Portfolio website course. In this video, we will be going over how to set up a service that can provide our project data to different parts of our site. However, before we get into that, let's add more sample projects first. Right now, we just have this one sample project in our portfolio component. I'm going to replace this with an array of sample projects. These are all fake projects that don't correlate to anything in the real world, but will be what we will use as examples. I will provide this code in the description, so you're welcome to copy what's there. Or you can create your own array based off of your own projects. That choice will be up to you. After bringing these projects in, we now have some errors in the HTML template for our portfolio component. This is because it's looking for that singular project we had before. What we're going to do now is we're going to loop on our projects array since the amount of projects we have could change over time. This will be similar to how we looped over our tags for our project cards in the previous video. Let's delete two of these project card divs. We're going to add angular looping to the remaining div. Before the class property in the div, let's add ng4. Let's change the body of the loop to let project of projects. Now our template will loop on our array of projects. Let's take a look at our site to make sure this is working properly. As you can see, our site is now displaying all six of the projects we have in our projects array. At this point, you may be wondering, why do we need to set up a service? Our projects are being displayed just fine currently. And the answer is that on our homepage. We have a featured project section that we want to use to showcase one of our projects. And right now, these projects only exist within the portfolio component, and they currently cannot be accessed by any other component. That's where services come in. Let's go back to our project. Services in Angular are a way of providing the same set of functionality to any component in our project. Using a service to supply our project information would allow us to access the projects from the home page as well. Earlier, we used a service that was provided by Angular to set the title of our page depending on which component is active. Now, we're going to create our own service and implement the functionality that we want that service to have. In the terminal, go ahead and create a new terminal instance. We can create a service by using the Angular CLI, similar to how components are created. Before we do this, let's create a folder to contain our services. Within the app folder, create a subfolder called underscore services. Going back to our terminal, let's navigate to the folder we just created. Now let's type ng g s projects skip tests. The g is short for generate and the s is short for service. Let's press enter. We have now created our project service within our services folder. Let's open it up. A new service isn't too different from the TypeScript file that's generated when we have a component. The major difference is that it's not associated with an HTML template and CSS stylesheet. It has also been designated as an injectable, which means that we can dependency inject this service into our components. We have done this once already with the title service, but other than that, we can define methods for our service the same way we would for our components. Before we continue, let's copy our project's array into this service. Now 
then we will need to import our models. This array within our service will serve as our single source of data for our projects. In a real-world setting, services are commonly used to fetch data from API endpoints and then supply that data to components to use. However, for us, spitting up a database and building out a backend is far above the scope of this course. And to keep it simple, our service will fetch what it needs from this array. Now let's think for a minute about what functionality we want from our service. Right now, we want to supply all of our projects to our portfolio page. And we also want to be able to supply just one project to our home page. For the first use case, let's create a method called getProjects. In the body of this method, let's type return this.projects. When this method is called, it will return the entire array of projects, which is what we will use for our portfolio page. To supply just one project, let's create a new method called getProjectById. This method is going to take in a parameter called id. This is what will be used to select the project we want. Let's also set the return type of this method to just one project by typing colon project. In the body of this method, let's type let project equals this dot projects dot find project project ID equals ID. This line will iterate through our projects array and will return the first project where that project ID is equal to the ID that is supplied as a parameter. It is possible that there is no project that matches the ID that we passed in. We will need to handle this case by typing the following. Realistically, this shouldn't ever happen because this is just a personal site and we should know if the ID we're passing in is valid or not. But now it will be handled just in case. And lastly, we will return that project. We have finished defining our methods for fetching project data. Let's try using this service in our components. Let's navigate to the portfolio component In our constructor, let's inject our project service by typing private project service colon project service. Make sure to import the service as well. Next, we're going to keep our projects variable, but let's remove its definition. And instead, we'll initialize it as an empty object of type project array. Before we call our service, we will need to implement the onInit interface first. After the name of our component, let's type implements onInit. It didn't import automatically this time. Let's fix this now. We're now getting an error because our interface isn't implemented yet. Let's fix that now by clicking on Quick Fix and then Implement Interface. We're going to call our service within the ng on init method. Let's type this.projects equals this.projectService.getProjects. 
this call to our service will populate our local projects array with the data returned from the get projects method. Let's take a look at the ng on init method and why we're using it. ng on init is a method that is derived from the on init interface, which we are now implementing. ng on init is a lifecycle hook that is invoked immediately after the component is initialized. This method is the appropriate place to load in data for our component. Let's take a look at our site to make sure the service is working properly. Our projects are still here, which means they have been loaded in from our service successfully. Let's go back to our project. Next, let's navigate to our home component. Like before, let's inject our service into this component. Make sure to import the service as well. We're going to need a variable to hold the project we fetch, so up here, let's type the following. We will need to import our project model as well. Next, let's implement the onInit interface. And let's implement the missing interface method like before. In the ng on init method, let's type this dot featured project equals this dot project service dot get project by ID. We have set up this method to take in an ID, which will allow us to select which project we want. If we go back to our service, the first project here has an ID of zero. I'm going to choose this project to be our featured project so let's go back to our home component and pass in zero as the ID. To see if this works, let's go to our HTML template for our home component. Underneath the featured project header, Let's add an H4 header that contains the featured project's name. That way, we can visibly see if the project data has been pulled from our service. Let's go to our site and check that now. We can see that the name of our project is being displayed in the Featured Project section. This is proof that the Get Project by ID method in our service as a whole is functioning properly. We'll leave the project name, but we're going to hold off on building out the rest of the Featured Project tile for now, since the next step would involve a slideshow of pictures for our projects, which is something we still haven't set up yet. This will be our stopping point for this video. In the next video, we will go over how to set up a modal. The modal is a pop-up that will be displayed when we click on View More from one of our projects. And speaking of a slideshow of pictures, that will also be covered in our next video. Feel free to click on that video now to continue along with the course. Thanks for watching.